as you can hear, the sticks hitting helmets from up here, and that is not a good a good sign. And you know, you, you can't blame Gord Lane for defending his player as uh, the Carter was. Takes another hit from Clark. Really the only thing that's been consi consistent tonight for the Indians. And now we have a scrap breaking out. Horde and Clark. And Clarkie gets the sweater over the top of Horde and trying to tangle him up. Clark landed a couple of punches early. Horde now trips Clark, but Clark ends up on top. Well, you can see that one coming, John. I'll give Horde some credit because Bill Root has really taken a beating. He got knocked down by Clark. And I think he went to uh, Horde or to Root's defense, and Clark and him had words after the Kushner Horde fight. Clark did the smart thing here because Horde, might, a bigger and looks like a much taller guy, uh, Clark was able to get the shirt up over Horde's head and then landed a couple of punches. And that's the way to fight in hockey. If you can get those shirts up over the face, and well, uh, Clark he put on a show here, but the scoreboard tells it all. 6-2 hockey game. But, uh, the theatrics mean nothing right here, although the fans like it, so what can you say? Paul Gardner points to the scoreboard. Really, that's... That's really all that matters, John. That's all that matters. I mean, that fight that's, was a... That's a joke. That's a nothing fight no. in, my, in my estimation. No. I mean, fights at times... Gary Clark. Clark lands a left hand early. Now he's trying to work the body with some rights. Clark. Lands a good right hand, manhandles Jermaine, and the linesmen move in. Well, Eric Jermaine's a tough guy. He's got that shield on, Johnny, and it's one of the things that drives me crazy. I think the linesmen referees are going to have to do something, or the rules committee of the American Hockey League, for the players that fight that keep the shields on. If you're going to be a tough guy and want to fight, then take the shields off. It's that simple. And Kerry Clark puts the hands up. He's definitely a winner in that fight. As he, I think he got Eric Jermaine with a good punch right square in the nose, probably underneath that shield. But uh, Clarkie igniting the fans here, not only with a goal, but with his fistics, uh, fistic ability as well. So both him and 
Jermaine will be in the penalty box. It's Mike Stevens over to talk to him. But again, Jermaine, we saw him earlier this season, wanted to square off with Rod Dahlman, and he did so, but he doesn't take the shield off, so you can be a you know King Kong stand there all night long and throw them. You know, you know you really can't get hurt. Here we see Clark and Jermaine go at it. Of course, Clark with the theatrics, Bruce, you know as a former player, when you do that, you're going to have to defend yourself at some point for basically showing up the other team. Well, there's no question about it, but we know Kerry Clark is quite capable. Watch this one punch. There's the one that, that just about put Jermaine out of it right there. And there Jermaine will think twice next time he takes on Kerry Clark. But a pretty good scrap. But it's no question about it. The players will get incensed when they see Kerry Clark score a goal and then do the moonwalk. So you get around Steve Richmond. Buck is still fought for in the slot. It rolls to Clark. Bit in front. He scores. Look for the moonwalk. Michael Jackson, eat your heart out. Well, Kerry Clark is certainly colorful. There's no question about it. The fans are going crazy here. He just had another little twist to it, Johnny. I've never seen that one before. Of course, Kerry Clark, unfortunately for Clark, he's a real fan favorite. But unfortunately for Clark, he's only had the opportunity to do the moonwalk a few times this season. That's his fifth goal. But again, a good effort by the Springfield Indians putting good pressure. Look at Clarkie, a little give and go, turning Richmond inside out, and good hustle by DeMaio here. Kicks the puck up to Clark. Clarkie's going to get his own rebound right here and throw the backhander in. And watch this moonwalk for the fans at home, John. Watch this camera's right on Kerry. Here he goes, Michael Jackson, as you said. Look at him with those feet going, waving <laughs> bye-bye to the goaltender. And then he gives a little a little twist at the end that I haven't seen before, John. We'll have to see if the camera holds up. For now, the hips go. I think he has a little move with the hips. It's the shoulders. There we go. There it is. <laughs> That's a different one. That's for sure. Here's Rod Dolman. Indians attack through center, riding a nine-game point streak. It's Sean Evans away for Byron. Behind the play, some fisticuffs. Harry Clark for Springfield. And Brian Verbeek of the Binghamton Whalers. Markey going to work with some right hands. A quick flurry of rights, and then Verbeek showing good strength, wrestling down the bigger Kerry Clark. Well, that shows me something in Brian Verbeek. He's a youngster, came back from Europe this year, John. Nobody knew too much about Verbeek. He played in Finland. Cuckoo, I believe it is, the team he played in Finland. He came back from Europe. He played his junior hockey in Kingston of the, of the OHL. He was brought back from Europe by the Hartford Whalers. He showed that he's not afraid to take on the tough customers. Verbeek, not a real big kid, but showed that he's not afraid to go against one of the bigger guys in the league, Kerry Clark, and as you said, showed some strength and basically wrestling Kerry Clark to the ground. But Clark, he had challenged him, and Verbeek was, uh, was welcome to the challenge. Bruce, I have to say it. I heard the fans were nuts about his play in Cuckoo. No reply. <laughs> no reply on that one. I know, six left to go in the first period. I think that's not Cuckoo, though. I think that's a misprint in the, in the NHL guide. I'm going to look wow. that up between periods. It says in the guide Cuc Cuckoo, but I don't believe it's Cuckoo. Okay. Well, you said it first. I said it first. I only said what I read. <laughs> but you'll see it coming up. Clark takes Verbeek out of the play very heavily here. And then he, if the camera rolls on here, you'll see that Clark will challenge uh, Brian Verbeek as the play goes up ice. And I'm surprised that he did not get an instigator. Hopefully the camera rolls. Still they're they're jostling him while the play goes up. It's outside the line. Pryor floors the Binghamton player Brant along the boards. And now Tour comes in to grab Pryor. Those two were teammates last season for the Kalamazoo wings of the IHL. And it's Al Tour and Chris Pryor getting involved directly in front of the Springfield bench. And Jimmy Roberts doing a heads up maneuver trying to hold Dale Kushner back. And Tour wants a piece of Kushner along the bench, and here we go. Coach Roberts desperately trying to restrain Kushner. Clark comes in and grabs Tour. Real melee breaking out here in front of the Springfield bench. 16.45 left to go, third period. And Dale Kushner couldn't mind his manners along the near boards. And now the Freckis the main bout between Tour and Clark. Dahlman has a hold of Chris Brandt. And we see Kerry Clark and Al Tour doing battle right there. Well, it'll be interesting, John, what the call will be on Dale Kushner. It looked to me like he may have got suckered while he was standing on the bench. He can yap all he wants, John, if he's standing on the bench, but it's hard to say. The play was down below us here. We really couldn't see it. Mark Fossett's got the pad out, so he's taking notes. There's definitely going to be a, a couple of calls out of this one. 
uh, an ugly altercation taking place as Chris Pryor was going off the initial two and his former teammate last year Al Tour came into his players uh, one of the Bingham players rescue and he's going to the penalty box but there's going to be a number of penalties handed out here we'll just have to wait for the final call well with a break in the action 1645 left to go third period the score the Springfield Indians eight and the Binghamton Whalers four this is the AHL game of the week Well, I believe it was Chris Pryor actually makes a pretty good body check and, and the, uh, he'll come in from be hit the Binghamton player from behind a little bit. Right here, he's going to come in with the cross check on the back, more of a shove. And right at that time, Fawcett had his, his hand up to whistle him off for two minutes. But here comes Al Tour into the altercation right there, sticks his hand in. We get a pretty good look at it. There's Tour, Pryor, Pryor Branton, and Rod Dahlman, and that just turns into a big melee with everybody getting involved. So we'll wait, John, to see what the final calls are here by referee Mark Fossett. Well, the first penalty goes to Tour, double minor for roughing and a 10-minute misconduct. Chris Pryor, Dahlman, back for DeMaio. Now we have a skirmish in front of the net. Kerry Clark has dropped his mitts, and so has Jim Colhane of Binghamton. Colhane gets some real shots in early. Clark trying to battle back. Clark now gets on top of Colhane. All of this occurring with 2.29 left to go second period. Well, Jim Colhane, he, he's a big kid. This fight is continuing. And this is where I want, you'd like to see Kerry Clark just stop. He don't want any further penalties. But Jim Colhane, he's a big, strong kid. He's in his second year with the Binghamton Whalers. And he comes to play every night. He's out of Haleyburg, Ontario. Played his college hockey at Western Michigan. And, He's sixth pick by the Whalers, 1984, and he's a, he's a pretty good scrapper. We saw him go a couple times last year, John, and he took on one of the tough boys in the American Hockey this year, Kerry Clark, and Kerry and Colhane having a pretty good battle. Actually, Colhane, I think, got a couple good shots in, but here you see Clark, he uh, always got a smile on his face, a real character. You love really his impressions, is. John. He oh. does five or six real good impressions oh. of Hollywood. I'm on the wing for McKay, takes a bump from Clark. They push and shove, and here they go. Kerry Clark and Randy McKay. Clark lands a right hand right at the outset. Now he switches and goes to work with the left. McKay now just wants to hang on, I'm sure. Clark wants to manhandle McKay and wrestle him into the boards. Clark at least is in friendly territory in front of his own bench, and Randy McKay really picked a tough customer in Kerry Clark. You have to give McKay credit, John. He looked like he was going to go earlier with Sean Byram, and he's not afraid to take on some of the rough customers. Of course, Kerry Clark, one of the tough guys. So give McKay some credit as well. It's not always how many you win, but showing a willingness to go when you have to. And McKay certainly showed a lot of guts taking off, of taking on a tough guy like Kerry Clark, and actually did a pretty good job. Clark got a couple shots in early, but McKay was able to hold on. And McKay battling with Clark. Clark very much a fan favorite as we see him by a lot. Hatcher of Baltimore, Kerry Clark of Springfield. And Hatcher wrestles Clark down. And believe it or not, Clark is a tough customer. He wails away with some right hands, but Hatcher makes Clark look like a David and Goliath confrontation. What a matchup. Kerry Clark's not a very small guy himself at six foot one, but Mark Hatcher just towers over everybody in this league. It was sort of like uh, a Hulk Hogan taking on a midget here, midget wrestling, because Mark Hatcher was easily able to throw big Kerry Clark down to the ice, but give Clarky credit, he got right back up and come right back at the big guy, Mark Hatcher. And actually, it might be a break for the Springfield Indians because the uh, Baltimore Skipjacks were going up the ice on a two-on-one break or a three-on-two break, actually, and then the referee had to blow the play dead as both players squared off inside the Baltimore blue line. We'll wait for the calls. It should be just five minutes each. There should be no instigating on that, but Mark Hatcher easily throwing Kerry Clark to the ice, but give Clark credit, John. He's jumped right back up. Each player gets five minutes apiece for fighting, and it comes here at the 121 mark of the third period. Maybe the only person that can look Hatcher in the eye would be National Hockey League linesman Mike Civic, who's six foot eight. Well, Mark Hatcher had retired from hockey uh, briefly and decided to come back to hockey and give it another world. He got a chance. And then we're going to take a look at it right here. Maybe we'll see the takedown right here. He gets a hold of him. And just oh. throws him down to the ice. He body slams him down to the ice. And, uh, easily, but Clark can right back up and is able to throw some punches with the linesman here being. Sometimes that's a problem with linesmen don't get good position. They get one the Jacks look to work it out, and here was another scrap as Kent Carlson and Gary Clark go to work. Clark switches hands and goes to work with his left on Carlson. 
Carlson now trying to wrestle Clark down. Linesmen want to move in. But the Indians, who played a very non-physical game against New Haven on Friday night, Bruce, really picking up the pace here against Baltimore. Well, you stated very early in this telecast, John, that this game had a, a look to it that things may break out, whether it's the frustration by Springfield, who have not been winning as of late, or the fact that Baltimore has a big, strong, tough club, and Springfield wanted to show them right here in their own building that they're not going to come in and make this an easy game for them, have taken the body to them early, which is a good sign to see the body checking. We don't know what what started that fight right there, but Kerry Clark and Kent Carlson, two big guys, went at it. A lot of people think, as I did, John, at one time, that Kent Carlson was a Swedish hockey That's player right. uh, just by the name, but Kent, Kent Carlson was born in, uh, in New Hampshire, and he was originally drafted by the Montreal by the Montreal Canadiens, and he missed the 1986 season due to back fusion, so he's had some injury problems as well, but he played his uh, college hockey at St. Lawrence University and was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens. Five minutes each for fighting. Kent Carlson, the Concord, New Hampshire native, and Kerry Clark at 16.55 to go in the final period. Indians five and the Amherst three. Here's Fitzgerald, and here's a scrap. Kerry Clark and Wayne Van Dorf, a heavyweight confrontation. Van Dorf with a couple of rights, and so does Mr. Clark. Here they go. Both in tight now. Van Dorf with leverage gets on top of Clark, and that'll be the end of that one. Well, big Wayne Van Dorf, all six foot five. He took on a heavyweight himself and Kerry Clark, and I think Kerry Clark got the better of the punches in here. Clark, he's a tough guy himself, six foot one, 210 pounds, and he went after the big guy here and dropped the gloves. A pretty good scrap, I think, was Kerry Clark got in the best shots in close, and Wayne Van Dorf, as you said, John, he was able to body slam him to the ice, but uh, Kerry Clark is a becoming a fan favorite here in Springfield because he's known for his, his fighting ability and his toughness, and that's something the Indians haven't been treated to this year as much when they had Mick Dakota last year. Watch it coming up here. Nice hit by Clark. Actually just takes his man out of the play. And you'll see, oh, there's a punch. See, right there, I don't know if Lance Roberts is going to see it, but Wayne Van Dorp actually sucker punched Kerry Clark, and watch them go at it here. You see the difference in the size here. Oh, Van yeah. Dorp sort of towering over Kerry Clark. Watch there, it was Clarky getting a couple of punches in right there in the nose, a couple of good shots, and Van Dorp with a couple himself. So, a pretty good fight, good camera action right there, good camera action as uh, uh, the Wrestling Federation coming to Springfield December 4th. Maybe we get a preview of what's to come. Super Slam 88. And there's Kerry Clark, and you're right, Bruce, he is a fan favorite here in Springfield, and an additional penalty to Van Dorp. Well, there should have been, because Van Dorp actually sucker punched her Indians only with eight forwards. Here's another fight. We knew this was going to happen. Well, round number two for Kerry Clark. And for the Canadians, it is a Roberge. It's Mario. Mario Roberge. Clark has a size advantage. Mario Roberge, unorthodox style. Got some shots in. Well, he got some shots in on Clarkie there. That was the brother, sir. He went with Clarkie went with Surge the first time. Now I'd like to see Clarkie get up and go to the penalty box because they can't afford to get him have him thrown out of the game here. He did take a couple punches there, but I think he also landed a couple as well, John. So Kerry Clark, a tough guy, and I've always said it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, John. That means nothing. It's just the willingness to go. And I've always said some of the better fighters are guys that don't fight all that much. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised you don't see Clarkie go one more time. Unfortunately, that would mean a, a game misconduct, and the Indians can't afford that right now. But Clarkie, big grin in his face. Hard to hurt that face, John. Traffic. traffic. Unbelievable how he keeps that puck on his stick when he's in traffic. One of the best in the league at that. With it now, Chris Pryor. And we have a scrap. Kerry Clark. Serge Roberge, I believe. Here they go. I don't like this surprise as you or I, John, that's for sure. Both players in tight, as you can see right there. Roberge gets a right hand free. Clark can't get on track. Clark trying to go to work with the left. Serge Robert standing up tall here against Kerry Clark. Big battle. It's amazing, John. I've always got a kick out of it. You watch two guys go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. One guy could be landing about 25 punches. The other guy maybe not get any in. But whoever lands on the bottom, it doesn't matter who throws. As long as the one guy throws the other guy down, he's the winner. But Clarky, right there, he'll get the crowd going again. He loves to get these crowds going. And he does a good job. But Kerry Clark doing a good job against one of the tough guys in the league, Sarah's Roberts. Sarah's Roberts in 38 games. Seconds left to go in the final period. Indians five and the Amherst three. Here's Fitzgerald and here's a scrap. Kerry Clark and 
Wayne Van Dorf, a heavyweight confrontation. Van Dorf with a couple of rights, and so does Mr. Clark. Here they go. Both in tight now. Van Dorf with leverage gets on top of Clark, and that'll be the end of that one. Well, big Wayne Van Dorf, all six foot five. He took on a heavyweight himself and Kerry Clark, and I think Kerry Clark got the better of the punches in here. Clark, he's a tough guy himself, six foot one, 210 pounds, and he went after the big guy here. He dropped the gloves, a pretty good scrap. I think it was Kerry Clark got in the best shots in close, and Wayne Van Dorf, as you said, John, he was able to body slam him to the ice, but uh, Kerry Clark is a becoming a fan favorite here in Springfield because he's known for his, his fighting ability and his toughness, and that's something the Indians haven't been treated to this year as much when they had Mick Lakota last year. Watch it coming up here. Nice hit by Clark. Actually, just takes his man out of the play. And you'll see, oh, there's a punch. See, right there, I don't know if Lance Roberts is going to see it, but Wayne Van Dorp actually sucker punched Kerry Clark, and watch them go at it here. You see the difference in the size here. Oh, Van yeah. Dorp sort of towering over Kerry Clark. Watch there, it was Clarkie getting a couple of punches in, right there in the nose, a couple of good shots, and Van Dorp with a couple himself, so a pretty good fight, good camera action right there, good camera action.